he does have a very good idea of what the basics are. And that's important to, to at least have, at least his drawings kind of make sense. But they are going to have to be analyzed and broken down by civil engineers, by mechanical engineers, by aerospace engineers like myself to say, here is this building. How are we really going to build it? What are we going to build it out of? What are its strengths and weaknesses? How are we going to do this and that and the other thing? That's all going to definitely have to be done. So, But will the first city kind of look like these descriptions that you see and all that? Absolutely. I think so. Very much so. Um, in fact, uh, most recently, um, uh, what's his name in, uh, in England who works with Heather, just recently made a new graphic of a walkthrough, a fly-through. Um, Andrew. Andrew, yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> brain fart on my part. Uh, Andrew uh, made this really awesome looking kind of a smaller version of a city. Uh, and, and that's probably what the test city would look like in, in most respects. And so um, I think the test city needs to look like that. We need, we need to prove ourselves. Right now we do a lot of talking and there's a lot of anecdotal evidence. But we need to prove ourselves. It's, you know, I can talk about the space shuttle all I want. I can give you a lot of details about how the tanks work, about how, uh, how the fuel systems work, the valves, the pumps, the, 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 the motors, uh, you know, everything down to the hypergolic fuels that run the ohms pods and everything else. I can give you all that till the cows come home. You don't know how it works until you launch the thing. And that's when you really know whether or not all your talk and analysis has mattered. And so um, that, that's the next step for us is we are approaching this via the scientific method. Well, step one, hypothesis. That's kind of the step we're in right now. At some point, you've got to do experiment to validate or invalidate your hypothesis. And so we'll build the test city, try to make it look exactly as we are showing it will look as best as we can, even if it's a scaled down version of it, at least it'll be the same. And then instead of holding 5 million people, it holds 50,000 people, something to that effect. But then we can start ironing out the bugs. You know, well, we think this will work this way. Well, guess what? It really doesn't. And we need to do this better. So we need to redesign it. So then we redesign and we redesign and we redesign. And we spend like 10 years perfecting the city as best we can with as much current knowledge and and help as we as we possibly can. So that's how I think uh, it will go. Did I did I answer your questions good? Well done. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. I appreciate that. Um, somebody asked something. I think here in the text, Roberto did. What is your outlook on community building or living off the grid? I find it often Z members feel this is the way to the transition. Although it may set you up for being a target, as the system keep failing. Um, this is actually funny that you that you asked this, Roberto, because this is a conversation I got into just the other day on a Facebook thread. And I've been going back and forth with some people, and somebody was asking, you know, I want blueprints, uh, and I want to do stuff, and, and I keep being told that I need to be wealthy or I need to have high political power in order to do any of this, and he doesn't like that, and he's trying to, trying to poo-poo what we're doing because of that notion, and, and I keep trying to tell him, well, one – we don't really have blueprints per se. All we're doing is, uh, you know, blending all the existing technologies together into one uniform system. And so, um, if you want a blueprint, go contact a company that builds the solar panel. They, they can, I doubt you're going to get a blueprint because of copyright laws and everything else, and, and they're wanting to protect their technology. But I don't have blueprints. What we know how to get those things and get those resources and implement them into a city system. So the, the asking for blueprints is kind of a silly question because there are no blueprints per se, not like that. There might be blueprints for the city, but anybody can design their own city if they have an architectural background. So we don't even need to provide them with that. You know, they can do that on their own if they want to. Um, as far as uh, an individual with part as with reference to your question, can people take themselves off the grid, yes, but it's expensive. Uh, you can add solar panels and wind towers to your home and virtually take yourself off the grid completely, especially if you get a couple of fuel cell batteries in the basement or in the back. Um, you can add 
energy efficient windows that actually uh, during the winter time, especially if you live in the northeast, you can get these windows that have water in them. And when the sun hits on them, it can be 30 degrees outside, but the water inside the window is like 90 degrees. And the 90 degree heat radiating into the house ends up helping to warm the house. You can add a geothermal pump to your house to warm your water and also provide heating through the floor baseboards of your home. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can take yourselves off the grid. You can start growing your own food or if nothing else as a neighborhood – Get a plot of land or whatever, and 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 every or everybody grow a little bit, and everybody work together to take themselves off of the need to shop for food at grocery stores and things of that nature. But when you start adding all that up, that's not cheap. It's not easy for the individual person to actually pull this off. I can't even do it. I'm renting a house right now. I can't make those kinds of modifications to to this house because I don't own it. I would only be able to do that if I was a homeowner. And there aren't that many people that are homeowners anymore, especially in the United States with the economic crash. People are getting evicted left and right. They're, they're doing good to pay the mortgage, much less upgrade their house to a off-the-grid sustainable system. So I would say for the people that can do that, absolutely do it. Uh, I, I, would, I, I have a house designed – You know, I need to work with an architect to finalize the details, but I have a house designed that will be one of the most off-the-grid, self-sufficient SOBs on the planet. I'll be able to just stick it on a plot of land and tell the electric company to bugger off, you know, which will be great. So, But that's if you design and build a house with that in mind. Most people can't do that. And so it's this is where you run into a, a discontinuity between people who want to do self-sustaining but just can't afford to do it. And so that's where we come in and say, let's just do it as a holistic system. Let's just do it as a whole city. Let's just all come together and do it as a group and, and you know, boom. And now we've got it all, and we're all living together, and we're all happy, and let's have a beer. And so that's the kind of – that's the mindset where the Venus Project comes into play. The only drawback is that boom and getting that boom to work. Well, yeah, I, I agree. The the boom is difficult, um, but I mean that's why we have to do the we have to do the test city. We have to prove ourselves. You know, we've got to we've got to really show that we can do what we're what we're talking about. I have a. We need. Go ahead. Um, hi, Douglas. This is Seth from New Jersey. Um, I have a question that's um, I've been rolling around as to what form it's going to take, but. Uh, I basically want to put together some kind of a presentation about uh, how a, a hot rock geothermal plant could be built and the current technology that we have that will support doing that. And we really don't have to wait for much engineering on it because between the um, nuclear, you know, the, the the designs for building a nuclear reactor and uh, space science and um, drilling techniques that exist now, uh, I think it can be done um, with current technology. Um, how would you go about putting together some kind of information like that? Well, you're you're somewhat out of my ballpark of expertise, so I'll I'll start this off by saying I'm not really I don't know much about geothermal as far as details or or any of that is concerned. Um, but as far as gathering the data, are you basically asking how would you go about getting the information so that you could put a system like that together? Yes. All right. Um, I would look at the Department of Energy um, and any research papers that they have funded or sponsored in relation to geothermal. Um, I would research existing geothermal plants, as many as you can find. Um, and and try to see how they run and, and their operations um, and what resources they use, uh, things of that nature. Uh, universities and any uh, renewable energy departments that they might have, they might be able to pass off uh, lectures or research papers or anything uh, regarding uh, geothermal use, things of that nature. That's how I would start tackling it. All right, thanks. Kelly, I think you were going to ask me something. Uh, you kind of both chimed in at the same time with Seth, so if you still have your question on your brain, go ahead and uh, fire it away. Or no? Okay. Anybody have uh, anything else they want to throw at me? 
I guess, uh, has anyone heard of <clears throat> creating a uh, nuclear reactor on, um, you know, on your own as a, as a citizen? Because apparently some guy, a Brooklyn man, built a fusion reactor, and because it doesn't have plutonium or uranium, it's, uh, it's not dangerous or something, and he's allowed to do it. I don't know what the laws are in regards to building a fusion, re or, fu I mean, uh, a fission reactor. So I don't know. Have you ever heard of um, somebody building that or anybody?